Even though Facebook says it's shutting down its photo tagging program, its facial recognition technology may not disappear. Here to talk about that is tech expert Carla Franklin. Carla, great to see you. Thanks for having me. Great to see you also. Well, first, tell us about facial recognition programs. How do they work? Well, essentially, facial recognition programs are like a lot of applications. There's underlying logic, some AI. What essentially happens is that uh, they have the ability to draw from a database or a repository of photos that Facebook has because we readily upload all of our photos and share all of our great moments uh, to Facebook. And they basically learn how to recognize intricacies of our facial expressions, our nose, our eyes, our teeth, and identify amongst billions of pictures individuals who those faces belong to. And so Facebook initially rolled out the solution in 2010. And so over the past 10 years, 10 plus years, Facebook, or now known as Metaverse, the company now formerly known as Facebook, who is now Metaverse, has had the opportunity to learn and teach and grow this AI to be able to recognize one particular individual individual from millions, if not billions of, of photos. So it's really AI and machine learning um, and underlying logic, but it's something that's evolved over 10 years and it's a pretty powerful mechanism. And I remember when it first came out, it really blew our minds like, wow, it recognizes Absolutely. my face. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I mean, it was amazing. All you had to do is upload your photo and Facebook would immediately know that this was your best friend or your mother or your child and could easily differentiate between siblings or people that looked alike. And so that that tells you how powerful the solution is and how good the AI and the logic underneath this program really is. Yeah. And of course, money makes the world go round, right? How do companies Absolutely. use facial recognition technology for profit? Absolutely. So you know, initially this was R&D, as I like to say. So Facebook is free, your Facebook account is free and you get to go on there and socialize and network and see new babies and kids grow and see your friends who are getting married because they're uploading for free, uploading pictures. So initially Facebook was not making money off of this. And this is like any other piece of technology that tech companies develop. They take a loss initially in developing it. But what users essentially did was give Facebook access to free R&D data. Think about it. Billions of pictures over a 10 year period to really hone and refine this facial recognition program and make it so robust that it can pick one individual out of billions. I mean, as of uh, third quarter 2021, Facebook had 2.9 billion active users. That's that's almost half the world's population. So we have basically provided this company with so much data and free access to experimental mechanisms that it you know was able to to develop an amazing uh, an amazing solution that it's now retiring. Interesting. Or is it really retiring it? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because you say facial recognition, the program used by Facebook, now known as Meta, of course, will remain even though it's shutting down its photo tagging system. Explain that. So what Facebook is saying is that it is shutting down or Meta, Metaverse is saying that it's shutting down this facial recognition program and it's deleting the the uh, 1 billion photos that it has in this active repository that it used to essentially teach the program to be as robust as it is. But in reality, they're also saying that they're going to still use it. Uh, and they're essentially couching this as an opportunity to uh, improve fraud detection and uh, increase security in some of its applications. So. I think many of us who are Facebook users have had the experience of maybe forgetting your password and then having being prompted to select 
your friends that you're connected to, to validate that you, you know, indeed are the user associated with this account. Well, that was part of what the facial recognition program allowed us to do, right? Or allowed Facebook to do. They are, they've spent way too much money and way too much time to just get rid of the program, which is not what they said they are, they are doing. And so what I see this evolving into is a tool that they can actually sell in the open market. Uh, and in some cases that might be a great thing for society, but you know, in other cases, these tools or a tool like the facial recognition program can be used for very negative, nefarious things. So yeah, what kind of security concerns could be associated with facial rec recognition technology? Absolutely. Uh, there are many, uh, including this falling into the hands of private corporations that are going to use it for things that are outside of the realm of, of fraud and security. So monitoring people, you know, we think it's going away and therefore Big Brother is going away on Facebook or part of Big Brother is going away on Facebook. But no, what if this is sold to your local bank or to your local city government, to the federal government, to law enforcement? Now, there are some good uses from a law enforcement or government standpoint in using this technology to keep citizens safe. But there are also some concerning use cases where this could be used to really overreach in terms of government surveillance, in terms of government investigations. And so there, you know, we, we, we must stay on top of this. We, you know, as much as Metaverse is a private company and certainly can do what it wants to do with the tools that it's developed, with the research that it has, this is such a powerful tool and mechanism that can be used for good and also, you know, for things that are not so great. Uh, there, I, I do think that there needs to be some legislation around this and that advocacy groups and consumers should keep an eye on it because we don't want this falling into the wrong hands. We don't want this used by any negative players. Another potential pitfall could be this falling into the hands of countries that are not necessarily our friends. Think of China, think of Russia, and having them use this technology, you know, within their own geographic boundaries, with their own citizens, or with Americans who are visiting or doing business with these countries. Now, I've talked about the negatives, but there are also positives. Mm -hmm. uh, I could potentially see this being used by the airline industry to ensure that passengers are who they are, to identify people who are threats or known threats who are boarding airplanes or trains or, or ships. So there is a multitude of things that this technology can be used for, both good and potentially not so good. Uh, and as with anything, it's not so much the tool, it's the user. But this is something that we want to pay attention to as, as, as consumers and as users, because for the past 10 years, Facebook really has had access to free R&D in the form of free Facebook accounts. So it is something that we collectively have helped to develop and we collectively need to keep an eye on and ensure it doesn't become something that is so negative um, and exploitative within our society that it is, you know, truly uh, uh, an entity in its own right that, you know, could potentially cause some societal issue. So, yeah, as you mentioned, it's a free thing. We choose to sign on. We choose to yeah. keep our pages. And it's a yeah. fun thing. What can we do if we continue to stay on that platform? What can we do to protect ourselves? I think really it's around just understanding that nothing is free. And I've said this before, nothing is free. When you sign up for that free email account, when you sign up for that free social media account, you are giving them access to your data. And so understand they will use that data for developing new tools, for surveilling you in some ways, for um, making your life easier in some ways. I mean, heck, it's easy just to upload a photo and have your friends and family automatically tagged and detected in the photograph. But what are you trading in exchange for that? So I would say that users just need to remain smart and vigilant, 
and just be very careful if they are uncomfortable with giving free access to their life and to their data. All right, a lot to think about. Tech expert Carla Franklin, thank you. Thank you.